Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spotlight webinar featuring shop floor data collection brought to you by HiQA. I am Lisa Sterling, your host and moderator for today's session. Before we get started, I would like to mention a couple of housekeeping items. We invite you to ask questions throughout the session by typing in your Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen as your phone is muted. We will address the questions received at the end of the presentation. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and will be available in a few days for playback. I would now like to introduce you to our presenter, Tim Hogan, Vice President of Business Development for HiQA. And with that, I will turn the floor over to Tim. Well, thank you very much, Lisa. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, your time is very valuable and we are not about to waste it. So we're gonna jump right into the message and get to showing you how you can acquire data on the shop floor and how it can streamline your downstream reporting and provide you with greater transparency to your individual operations. Um, so just to be clear and make sure we're all on the same page, um, this short webinar is intended um, for anyone looking to acquire data on the shop floor and have it automatically saved real time. So when we open the software in a minute, we're gonna be skipping some of the foundational elements like extracting GD&T and uh, creating inspection plans, assigning criticality, engage management, things like that. So we're just gonna jump right into the shop floor. Um, and this, being that the shop floor data collection is closely tied to manufacturing operations, um, today we're going to be looking at manufacturing operations and how to create in-process check sheets and how we can acquire the data on the shop floor real time using the IME IMX browser-based application. Now, just for clarity, IME stands for Inspection Manager Explorer and IMX stands for Inspection Manager Express. Um, yes, they both start with EX, but <laughs> that's our way to distinguish them. Um, but we can never get very far in a presentation without talking about one of our key advantages, and that is the database. So HiQA, the HiQA solution is fully database driven. So whether you're setting up an inspection plan, inputting measurements on the shop floor, or automatically importing your CMM data, it's all in the database and available real time. You'll be able to track SPC right on the shop floor. Or even better, you could be in your office tracking SPC as it's being entered on the shop floor. And it's all in the database. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, the database is on your secured network. This is not a cloud-based solution, so the data never leaves your network. So for the rest of our short spotlight webinar, uh, we're going to open the software, quickly balloon a print, and then build some manufacturing operations. Um, we'll then spend most of our time um, in the shop floor data collection tool that you see here. Um, then we're going to take the data that we get from this, uh, from this tool, and we're going to merge it with data that we're simulating from a CMM or other automated system like an ARM or a VMM or something like that. And we're going to create a first article report from those two sets of data. Additionally, we're also going to look at some data from um, the individual operations and how we can distinguish those as well. So let's jump into the software and show you how easy shop floor data collection can be. So first, we're going to start out in Inspection Manager. And we're going to let's just open a new file here. Oops, I'm sorry, new from drawing. And we'll open this one here. This is kind of our standard file that we use for, for demonstrations. It just gives you a good representation of uh, typical things that you'd run into. And then we just come up here and hit auto balloon right here at the top. And it gives us some options. We can do multi-page. You can do basic and reference dimensions. We're just going to click OK and let it run through the process. Now what it's doing is we have a proprietary OCR, optical character recognition. And in the background, it's looking at this entire print and distinguishing what is a dimension, what's gd &T, uh, if it's linear, if it's basic, all of that information. And then it's going to extract it 
and put it immediately into the bill of characteristics that you see at the bottom down here. You see the bill of characteristics. Um, all of this data, see this is fully balloon now, all the dimensions are, are identified by balloon numbers. But additionally, if I bring this up here, you can also see that it's already been extracted and all in the bill of characteristics. Now, as we're looking at this, please note that this is in the database already. All this information is already in the database. Nominals, tolerances, what type they are, even a, a sampling plan that we have preset um, for the different dimensions themselves. Now, when we get into manufacturing operations and identifying certain uh, features and characteristics, and again, this is all related to the shop floor tool that we're going to show um, very soon. Uh, let's say, for example, we select this dimension right here. We can come over here into gauge category and characteristic designator. Now, why would we do that now is because we can um, identify the important characteristics now so that they're properly measured downstream. For example, let's say I'm in the planning phase, right? I'm an engineer uh, making this uh, balloon print and inspection plan. And I'm gonna say, well, if this is gonna be measured on the floor, I want them to maybe use a, I don't know, blade micrometer. I'm just selected because it's on the top. I know it's not right. Um, to measure this on the shop floor. And maybe my characteristic designator, hey, this is a key characteristic. Or, you know, you can have anything in here. This is a completely customizable um, or configurable list, you know, CTQs or KPCs or whatever your time terminology is, flight safety. Um, but if we just call it a key characteristic and we hit save on this, now when we bring this up later in the shop floor tool that you'll see, it'll have a list of blade micrometers there for us to be able to choose. So this is a way to, again, streamline the downstream uh, process. But as we um, continue forward, and by the way, you can set up uh, defaults. For example, I have it set up as a default to where if it's a perpendicularity, automatically assign a gauge category to CMM. So you can have, and that happened in the first 20 seconds that, you, that this was ballooned. So you can have certain um, characteristics set up with certain defaults. So that again, streamlines your um, data and your information. So you don't have to do the repetitive work all the time of identifying all of those characteristics. Um, we're going to, again, skip a lot of the things that we would normally show in like a presentation. However, one of the things I did want to bring to your attention is the measurement gauge section. Um, and the, the reason I'd like to bring this to your attention is because it's going to come up when we open the shop floor tool. So we have a full gauge list right inside of the software that has all of the gauges, all of the information on it, all the calibration details, calibration vendor, calibration date, cert numbers. You can upload um, calibration certs right here. Uh, we even have notification settings set up to where you can send this to certain people to say, hey, this is expiring soon. Um, you know, make sure it's on your list to get it certified. Uh, because what you'll also see later on is that we, uh, we can restrict or the software can restrict the data that is being acquired on the shop floor to make sure that the gauge is within certification and calibration. Um, we also have this uh, function in here called usage history. And what we can do here is we track every um, dimension that this gauge has ever checked, right down to the job number, the lot number, the serial number, um, what dimension it was, whether it was a good or a bad check. We can even come over here and say, hey, who is this measured by? I know who was logged in that took this measurement, the inspection date. We can even track it um, by a machine or an NCR if need be. Um, where this is super important, where a lot of our customers find um, this to be extremely useful, is like in a drop gauge, for example. If they drop a gauge and they're not sure when it went bad or possibly when it started checking parts incorrectly, they can simply come back to here and see exactly when it started checking parts badly by looking at the um, check mark because it'll have a, a red mark on here if it checked it uh, incorrectly or excuse me have a failed dimension. Um, so it's an easy way to do it. You're not fumbling through files trying to look at reports and trying to find out when it was bad or not. Everything is captured right here. 
Um, but with that being said, we definitely want to get into the manufacturing operations. Because the manufacturing operations, as you well know, anybody on this call, you're not going to just take this part and um, cut it in one operation, right? You're going to have multiple operations, even if it's, say, it's a plastic injection molded part. You'd still have most of it's done probably in the one shot, but maybe there's a heat staking afterwards or a, you know, a welding um, or a plating even, maybe a class A surface or something. And uh, there's some form of operation that needs to be done. So we can identify what characteristics are um, affected in that specific operation. For example, uh, this one, this part would probably come in, it would probably get hypothetically, um, maybe roughed in the first op and then drilled in the second op and finished in the third op and um, uh, tapped in the fourth, uh, fifth operation, something along those lines. Um, and so what we can do is build the dimensions that are affected um, by those specific, excuse me, the dimensions that are affected by those operations. And let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say hypothetically, we're going to rough this part in op 10. So we're gonna take the overall dimension here. There's a little step right here. There's uh, the overall length right here. We've got a height right here, and then maybe this step height right here, this 0.25. Oops, that's the wrong one. Grab that one. So we have all of those dimensions listed there. And I'm just gonna come over here and click on add operation. Now, once I do that, it shows the manufacturing operation listed now in my list of operations. And then you can click on this little pencil and that just means that you can add information to it. And if I do that, I can come in here and say, well, what operation is this? It's op 10, um, maybe I'll name it roughing. You can even identify like maybe if it's a certain work cell or outsource or heat treat, what have you. Uh, we can even identify it by machine. Maybe you're going to do this on your uh, DMG mill, for example. Um, and we won't get into process right now, but I did just want to take like 30 seconds and explain this because we have another module called PQP. And what that is, is um, all of your PPAP documentation. Think uh, control plan, process flow diagram, PFMEA, all of your submission documents and information. So all of those um, uh, documents are based around usually a process, right? Here's your process. And then what are the failure modes of that process? You know, what is the, the flow of that process? So what we can do in the software or what we've done is we help you identify all of those different processes. And now in the operation, if you were to select the process, for example, uh, it's a milling operation. Now, all of the information that's associated with that process automatically populates all of your documentation, all your PFMEAs, your control plans, your um, the process flow diagram, uh, part submission warrant, everything for your submission requirements is automatically generated, automatically populated. So we're not gonna get into it here. We're talking about shop floor, but just wanted to let you know right here what that process was. So if I hit okay here, now I see I have a roughing operation here and then obviously the finished part. And down here in my bill of characteristics, we can see manufacturing operation and finished part. I can even select it right here to say, hey, I just wanna look at my roughing operation. Now, a lot of manufacturing engineers look at this and go, oh my gosh, I have to make prints for every single one of my operations or what they call operational prints or operational um, data sheets. Um, this is done for them. Uh, this is where we really start to bring together um, manufacturing and quality because typically they're two very segregated, almost siloed um, departments. And here's where we can start to collaborate and bring information together. It's like, okay, what am I doing in this operation? How does it relate to the end part and the, you know, the finished inspection, for example? And if this is being roughed for, oh, so sorry. Um, if we want, we can simply print this out and have an operational uh, print specifically for op 10. However, we're probably going to, if we rough it, leave some material for finish, right? We can come down here, being we're only in our roughing operation right here, 
we can select all of these and I'm going to do what's called a bulk update. And that just simply means, you know, do the same thing to all of these dimensions here that were selected. And I can update the nominal value. And let's say, for example, this is a, this um, print is in inches. I can say, hey, maybe I want to add 20 thousandths um, to the nominal. And I can add it, subtract it. If I'm working on an ID, right, maybe I want to subtract that value. Um, you can go by percentage, by number, even a conversion for metric. But I just want to say I'm going to add 20 thousandths to this. And maybe I want my um, you know, tolerances to be set at 10 thou, you know, a straight. Uh, just a straight 10 thou for all of my uh, dimensions. And maybe I want my gauge category, I want all of these measured with that blade micrometer, you know, or whatever you want. So you can set different parameters for just this operation. Now, if I hit apply and close, I come down here to my operation, I'm still in my roughing operation. All of my requirements have now been adjusted by that 20 thousandths. So my nominal has changed by 20 thousandths. You'll notice this is a four and a two and a two here. And now we're at 402, 202 and 202 here. So everything has already been updated. And I can even go in and create an inspection plan or like an in-process check sheet, what we call an inspection plan, right in inspection manager. Now, some of our customers will take this as like a first step. We're gonna, right after this, we're gonna jump right into the um, shop floor data tool. And, uh, but sometimes they want to just go a, a first step before they go that route. And this is a good first step. Hey, I've got this information. I have it identified in the um, operation itself, which operation it's being measured in. And here's my measured value. I can simply populate this. And if you did that, you could bring this information right back into Inspection Manager um, for it to populate the database so that you can do that. However, what we want to focus on mainly today is the shop floor tool. And we have, again, Explore and Express. I'll uh, go here. Here's Inspection Manager. We're looking at Explore here and Express here. Um, we're going to be spending our time in Explore. Um, the difference between them essentially is Explore is, shows you like all the jobs and all of the details. And then Express only shows you what's assigned to you. So if you, once you log in, every time we go to um, click on something and log in, or excuse me, I clicked on the wrong, yeah, Express, if I go to log in, um, it'll tell me, hey, I don't have any jobs available. So if I go back here and I click on Explore and I'll log in here. And by the way, I did wanna mention here, if you happen to have a, like a badge system or some type of scanning system at your facility to identify employees, you can also use that um, right here and just scan that in and then it'll log in their information. So as you saw in the gauges before, um, that we identified who took the measurement, right? So how do we know who took the measurement? It's the login. So every person at your facility will have their own unique login, okay? Um, so a couple of things I wanna point out to here, this is the main homepage for um, Explorer. And wanted to point this out to you, scan barcode, because if you happen to be in a shop where maybe you have a traveler or something going around with your job that has a barcode on it, they can simply scan that barcode and then all the information would come up for that job. So it's very streamlined for them. Um, you can go into a dashboard and just see, this is a configurable dashboard. It just gives you some basic information, how many jobs, how many samples, uh, some KPIs down here for accepted, rejected lots, what have you. Again, this is configurable. It can show what you want to see. This is just the standard. However, um, did want to also bring up the gauges. Now, we talked before about, hey, what um, gauge, full management of the gauges to track um, certification. However, when you get on, on the shop floor, it's kind of like, wait a minute, where's that gauge? Where did it go to? You can track the location of all the gauges too. And for example, up here is the category. And if I say, hey, I'm looking for that infamous uh, blade micrometer, it's like, oh, there it is right there. Um, it's checked in, it's right where it should be. Now I can check that gauge out and say, well, I wanna check it out and say, um, where am I taking it, right? Now comes the power of the dat database, right? It has all of this information already. Here's the gauge ID. 
the title, expiration, the manufacturer, where it is, who's logged in here. It has all this information already. So if I just come in here and say, hey, I'm taking this to the main plant and I check out, now it shows it is checked out, who has it and its current place. So if I, if I show up and I'm looking for this gauge, I can just log in here and say, oh, it's not here. Now I know who has it and who I need to go <laughs> track down to find my gauge I'm looking for. But then when it comes back in, we can just say check in, return to storage place, goes right back where it is. And also notice here, we have expired notes. So it won't let them check a gauge out if it is expired, okay? So very convenient for that. Wanted to show you that from the gauge management side. So now when we talk about entering information in from the shop floor, I um, want to kind of break this down into two different elements. One of them is I want to track my manufacturing operation, right? And I want all of my data for that operation. The other side of it is um, gathering data from the shop floor and then merging it with information from like a CMM or from, you know, QC or some other uh, automated measurement device, like a vision machine or something like that. So there's kind of like two elements we want to look at here, but we have to get the data in, right? That's the whole point of this. And these are the two key elements um, or key functions in the software to where you bring data in. Gallery kind of shows everything. And then if you just want to sort by part and job number, you could look here. You can also do that in gallery. We'll go into gallery and it's very kind of, oh, let's call it Apple-esque, right? You're thumbing through pictures, you're thumbing through um, the different prints, so you're identifying which um, job you're looking at. You can also come up here and go by customer name, project name, part number. Um, you could even just do a broad search right here if you wanted to, or if you happen to know the job number, um, if you're going for order 66, quick little hat tip to any fellow, um, uh, Star Wars fans. So anyway, if we look at order 66 and then say, oh, there's my part and that's the exact one that I want to measure. So if I go into this part, I can see some um, characteristics about it already from this dashboard. And then you can go into the job itself and even more, right? So here's some KPIs, what has been inspected, what hasn't, what's failed. And right here, there's my serial number. So now I know I'm going into serial number 001. And here is where I can start to enter information. Now, this is also a configurable screen. Um, if, for example, I can expand and collapse it to make it a little bigger. Um, you can pan this around. A lot of our customers will put this on a tablet because one of the things we haven't talked about yet is this is simply a browser-based application, right? This is Google Chrome. If you can put Google Chrome on a tablet, on a PC, on anything, you can access this. But don't think that it's going to the web. It's just going to an IP address internal into your system because it's staying in the same database, right? It's staying in the same network. Um, but once it's in here and I'm looking around at this, I can even come in here to manufacturing operation and here's my roughing op, for example. So if I go into my roughing operation, I can see that, oh, here's all the dimensions that I need to measure in my roughing op. And if I select on here, if I, excuse me, select the gate, it'll automatically come up with the first one, but you don't have to do it in order. You can, you know, if you want to start here, you can start here, whatever the, um, the person entering the data, whatever they want to do. But if I select this one, for example, I can see the requirements over here. Now is where we start to tie in all that information and hopefully you can start to see some of the power of bringing all this information together. For example, right here, I'll, have, I'll look at my tool and gauge information right here. And if I click on that, it's going to bring up my list of um, tools that I can use for measurement. And for example, on that category, there's my blade micrometer. I can simply say, okay, I'm using this blade micrometer. So in the, what you saw before when we were in the main um, uh, inspection manager program, what you saw was, or application rather, what you saw was, hey, in the downstream effect, I want you to use a blade micrometer. I didn't say which one, you know, we just said a category. Now we're coming in to say, hey, here's my ID. I know exactly what gauge I'm going to use to take this measurement. And I say blade micrometer. Now this says control because I hit control on my keyboard because I don't know if you can tell or not, but this is blinking. 
it's actually listening right now. And it's listening for like a, um, like if you have a gauge that has an RS-232 output or a Bluetooth or a wireless gauge, it's listening right now for an input to say, oh, there's my information, there's my data. So if you do have a wireless or electronic gauges at your facility that have an output, it can enter it directly in here, click of a button, no problem at all. However, you can also just enter the information in. And you can tell over here on the keypad that it's kind of designed for more of a touch screen, right? And it really is. So we can say, hey, 0.5, here's my measurement result. I'll hit accept. It'll go on to the next one. And I can just type in my 0.25, hit accept. Now let's say for it'll turn green and go on to the next one. But let's say, for example, um, we maybe have a go no go gauge for this out on the floor, but it was missed in the planning phase. I can even come down here and say, here's my pass fail. And it'll switch it to a pass fail. And I can just say pass that and accept and move on. And I'll go on to the next one. And I again, select my gauge that I'm using. Um, but let's say it, it's bad, right? Let's say I'll just put in a bad number. It'll automatically pop up with a note that says, hey, wait a minute, this showed out of tolerance. What do you want to do? Um, you want to measure it again, adjust the value, or is it really bad? Say, whoops, I, you know, I better measure that again. I may have looked at the caliper wrong or something or the micrometer wrong. And then you can just simply enter the information in here, hit accept, say, oh, yep, that's good now. Keep right on going. Or if it really is bad, you can say, oh, no, it really is bad. I measured it a couple of times. If you say keep failed, it'll automatically pop up with a non-conformance record that you can enter that information in. You just come down here and say, I'm going to add a new non-conformance. And you say, OK, this is uh, order 66. And Joe Inspector, and here's the time date. Again, database, it has all this information already, unique non-conformance number. I can just say, hey, or it is uh, repair required. Like I said, maybe it's scratched or something. If you can assign it to a, a work center, if you'd like to, inspection center. And once you hit OK, pops up with a defect code. And you can say, hey, where was the defect? And you could say, this is the machining. Oh, here's the code for my machining defect. And you hit OK. Now that nonconformance is logged in the system. And you can assign it to certain people and even notify them. OK? So all of that information is captured here. So that's on the operation side. But when we talk about merging the data together, I'm gonna to go over here to the finished part in our manufacturing operation right here. Whoops, there's mine. <laughs> Problem with hitting the control. Um, so when I select, let's say for example, these threads. Um, so the diameter and the position will come from the CMM, but the thread obviously can't come from a CMM. So let's say I need to measure that manually. I can come over here. I'm just going to, I just, uh, you know, scrolled over and selected this um, dimension number two. Now I can come over here and select the thread within that. And I can say, hey, same idea as before. What tool did you use and is it good or bad? And I can just come in here and say, hey, now where my, this is where the, um, the planning phase came in, right? Because my category was thread plug gauge. Now it's only showing me plug gauges as opposed to the full list. I can say, oh, I'm using this gauge for this, and it's good. I can hit accept. And now you can see that that turns green right on the screen. And this is my other, or this is another uh, manual check. It's a through hole. And I can say, oh, this is a, actually a visual check. This one wasn't done because it was a, a visual. And say, hey, this is a visual, and that looks good. It is a through hole. I can say accept there, turns green. Um, the last uh, manual check I would have here, and again, this is, I'm trying to simulate this being out on the floor, taking these measurements, and then we'll um, combine them in just a minute. And if I look at the, the thread itself, I can say, oh, here's my thread gauge. Again, it keeps the same one because it's the same spec. And I could say, hey, it's the, the pass that. And this is a four times, right? So it's gonna ask me four times once for each hole. Is it good? Is it good? Is it good? Yep, yep, yep. And I'll just hit past here. And then do this the fourth time here. 
So now if I step back for a second and look at this, I can see I have for my finished part again, I have some green in here already. And for my roughing operation, I have that information as well. So that's automatically populated right in the database. If I go back to my inspection manager and go into my order 66, now we're gonna simulate bringing some data in from a CMM and combining that data with what I just entered. Right, So I'm going to say import inspection results from a file. Now, if you did this on a CMM, and if you have the automatic data import, this would actually happen automatically. This would, uh, you actually, you would not have to go through this step, okay? Because if we say from a file, and I'll just pick up a file that we have, and this is simulating the raw data from a CMM, okay? And what I'm going to do now is say, oh, here's my sample that I had out on the shop floor. Um, this is a way for me to say merge it with this information. And I say import. It's going to import those inspection results and combine it with, um, with the information from the shop floor. And you can see here, we have all the information um, right in the software. Again, they all turn green, except for the one that was bad. This is from the CMM. We can see all of the information that we entered in from um, the thread here and the thread here, or excuse me, the through hole here. Those are all in the, in the data, excuse me, in the database. So the information came in and merged together. So now if we go through and just say inspection report single piece, and this is just set up for an AS9102 report, you can have any type of report template you want and you say create that report, it takes that merged data and puts it right on the inspection report, the FAI report. So here's your form one uh, for those aerospace customers. Here's your form two that would have the material information on it. And here's your form three. And you can even see right here, there's your thread gauge and there's your CMM. So there's, those were the uh, uh, gauges that were identified as to what's measuring this. We can set it up. This, this isn't set up that way, but you can also set it up to where it'll pull like the serial number information from the gauge that's actually used. But here's the information again got from the shop floor. And here's the information that it received from the CMM. Even more so, just to kind of show you the, uh, the database power. Now that I'm going back to the same exact spot I was before, this information that I imported from the CMM is showing up on the shop floor tool as well, because again, it's pulling data from the same spot, the same database, the same location. So it doesn't matter where you are, all of the information is in the database. Um, also, just one more thing really quick, I know we're running a little over on time. Um, you can also come in here and look at the operation itself. Um, what I mean by that, oops, uh, wrong one. I apologize for that. Um, that single part. So this is all the information that came in down here in the bill of characteristics for the finished part. You can also look at the roughing op itself, and that just narrows down to the operation that was pulled in. Again, this information was pulled in, right? Here's the actuals that we entered right in the um, shop floor data acquisition tool. Here is the failed dimension, for example. Um, the erroneous number I put in there, uh, all that information is there as well. So uh, I was going to try to roll into kind of shop floor SPC, uh, at least to show it to you, but we're running a little over on time. So we'll tie that up here. And Lisa, turn it back over to you for questions. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Tim. And to the audience, just a reminder, you can type your questions in at the bottom of your screen. There's a little Q&A tab, almost like a chat function. But we did get a couple of questions that have come in. Let's get started. Okay. The first one says, is there a limit to how many unique users that can be created for IME? How many active users can be recording measurements within IME at the same time? Ah, great question. So we have what's called concurrent license. We're on a concurrent licensing model. So you can have, let's call it as many as you want. Um, there is a somewhat of a limitation, but we haven't really had anyone run into that situation. You can have as many users um, available to use the system. However, only so many people can use it at a time. 
and it's just about how many licenses you purchase for that concurrent user. Perfect example would be like, let's say you have a, a company that has uh, 50, uh, 50 machinists out on the shop floor over three shifts. So that's 150 machinists. That's a little bit of a stretch, but just kind of bear with me. So maybe you, but only, oh, maybe at most half of those would um, be entering information simultaneously. So if you would purchase 25 of the licenses, that would be enough to cover all three shifts um, of 50 machinists per shift. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, great. Here's another question, somewhat related, but from a different individual. It says, okay. is there a way to see multiple part results on one screen? Um, you can see, yes. <laughs> yes, when you are in, um, in here, as you add uh, samples, they will show up in your samples right here. And you can select multiple ones. And um, it will actually show up as another line item under here. Let me show you, let me tell you what I mean. If I say, I'll just import the same file again and won't have the same information. Sorry for the... Um... Oops. Okay, finish part, here we go. Samples, select all, okay. Oh, am I in the wrong view? I apologize. Sorry, I was in the single piece report, so it wasn't showing up. Now I'm in the multi sample. So as you add samples, for example, they will just keep adding to the samples list here. And then you can come up here to the report view. And what I selected was multi sample mode. And now you can see them right on top of each other and um, how they look and how, according to their, you know, in spec, out of spec, what the dimensions were and everything. So yes, you can show all that information right here if you'd like to. You can also, in the inspection report itself, you can, we did a single piece report right here. You can create a multi-piece report as well. And it'll show up multiple pieces on the same, um, uh, the same report, so yes. Okay, so this next question says, is there a way to measure the same dimension on multiple parts, then progress to a different dimension and repeat the process? Yes, I'm thinking of how you do that. Um, because when you go into this part, so you're actually going into a job, into a lot, right into a sample. Um, and if you were, you can go back and change your sample. For example, um, all of your, here's, for example, I pulled in uh, number two that you saw, right? So here it is right here. You can simply click back a step, now go into this um, part. And now you can see here I'm on sample two, not sample 001. So in, again, all of the dimensions are right here. Um, going into my roughing op, you can see there's no data for it, okay, because I, we didn't measure it, and the, it's missing the information for the thread. So it's kind of what you'd expect, but yes, I guess that's a challenging way to say, uh, yes, you can do it. You just have to click back on the one um, screen and then go into the sample you want and then enter your information there. Okay, yeah. great. Here is another one. Sure. It says, in IME, when you were recording measurements, you passed four threads individually for a four times call out. Is there a way to pass all four threads at the same time? That's a good question, and I don't know the answer to it, to be honest with you. Um, let me try it here. I'm, I'm willing to try anything once. So if I select this, um,
uh, doesn't look like it. it looks like you'd have to do each one individually. Okay. Okay. Good question, though. I haven't been asked that before. <laughs> okay, let's start fresh. Here's another one. How do you write in the inspection operation for the flow chart? It says it will look similar to the previous manufacturing operation. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Sure. It says, how do you write in the inspection operation for the flow chart? It will look similar to the previous manufacturing operation. And this was a little bit earlier on in the session, so. Okay. I apologize, I'm not understanding your question. If you'd want to reach out to me directly, um, I'd be more than happy to answer it because it sounds to me like you're asking about um, the process that we identified in the manufacturing operation and that it, how it relates to the workflow with the um, PQP, but I'm not sure if that's what you actually mean. So um, I've got another um, a slide up here that has my contact information. And I would be more than happy to answer anything or, you know, we can touch base and contact each other as to what exactly you mean. Definitely want to get your question answered, but I'm not sure what you're asking. So I apologize for that. Okay, perfect. Here is another question. Oh, okay. is, the, is the input for IME drawing PDF based? Can you achieve these tasks with a model only? No, it actually is PDF. What you saw me pull in here. Um, was a PDF, and it is a, um, we can use any type of pictorial drawing, right? We can bring in a TIFF, a JPEG. Um, again, this is a PDF, uh, anything that you really want to do from a 2D. However, we also do have 3D model capabilities to be able to bring in a 3D model with PMI data and have it automatically pull all of that information in, automatically balloon it, and then automatically populate your bill of characteristics as well. So we can kind of do both, but we're typically based on, um, uh, we started out with a 2D print, 2D PDF print. Excellent. Okay, here is another question. Is it possible to start small and grow into the full functionality and or is it easy to add additional modules? It's pretty easy to add additional modules as you go. We actually have a lot of customers that do that because this is, um, I don't know if you could kind of tell or not, it, it's a big solution. And we, a lot of our customers tell us that they'll replace two to three different software packages from, you know, gauge management to SPC to, you know, ballooning software to um, possibly APQP. Um, uh, tracking information or documentation. So we have the capabilities to do all that. Um, but a lot of times people do, okay, let's, let's walk before we run. Let's start with the base level and then maybe get into the automatic data import later or get into the shop floor data acquisition later or get into the SPC later. We can always scale into things and we, we want you to help. We want to help you, right? In whatever way is possible. Some people want to delve right in and get it all taken care of. And some people want to um, expose themselves a little bit at a time. And we're, we're more than happy to help you with that as well. Okay, we'll go ahead and close with this final question. Okay. It says, how long does it take to implement it and train on the software? Depends on your level of implementation. It's a great question. Depends on your level of implementation, if you're, meaning if you're doing the whole thing at once or if you're kind of scaling into it. It could be anywhere from, um, if you're just starting with the basics, you know, we could have you up in like a month or two. Okay. Uh, it doesn't take long, but we, we do it in more of a scaled process. Uh, what, what I mean by that is we're going to step you through. There's a couple different levels of training. Um, there's some tasks, tasks to be done between those. We help you build some templates um, right inside. When you, we went into inspection report and you saw these um, templates right down here. We help you build some of those. So there's, there's just some time and element and implementation. And it really also depends on how fast you want to um, go with this. So it could be anywhere from two months. If you're doing the full package, you could be even up to like six to nine months to fully implement um, the, the PQP module and you know inspection plans and gauge management and everything. So it really depends on your level of implementation and your level of uh, commitment toward it 
meaning kind of busyness, right? How, how much time do you have to dedicate to it? The one thing I won't, the last thing I'll say about that is it's really going to depend on having someone internal at your company who's going to champion the change, right? Who's going to kind of take control and um, help facilitate this change because with manufacturing operations and having in-process checks along with um, quality and final and FAI and PQP and all that good stuff, um, we kind of uh, collaborate, we encourage collaboration between departments, but sometimes those departments um, aren't used to that, right? So they have to get used to the new process. So what we find is it really takes a person inside to be able to bring those departments together and, and outline a new process. Hope that helps. Be the change, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. Well, thank you, Tim, for sharing your expertise and to the audience for spending the time with us. We are a bit past our time, so we'll go ahead and conclude. Um, as you see here on the screen, Tim is sharing our contact information. So if you have any additional questions that come to mind, please feel free to reach out at any time. And we are recording the session and I will be emailing that out in the next couple of days in case you'd like to watch the playback or share it with your colleagues. Thanks so much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>